I'm Pramod Nair. I teach at the Department of English, University of Hyderabad. We co-host the annual prize for poetry along with the Rai Kral Trust. Um, we have been extremely happy in the department to be able to do something like this for a genre that doesn't get adequate enough attention, we think. Uh, it's not common to find any more anywhere in the world prizes awarded to poetry. Um, increasingly, we don't find students who want to read poetry or teachers who want to teach poetry. Um, so when people like Goedic actually write poetry, uh, we think it's part of our responsibility, at least in some ways, to make sure that it gets some kind of recognition. And we are very grateful to the Rai Trust for taking up this initiative, working with us towards it. It's not easy to sustain it year after year, as uh, Professor Rai Prahl would uh, testify to do this year after year. Uh, why poetry at all? Professor Ibrahim will tell you something about it. Uh, Manorama has already spoken to you about it. Uh, but English, as a field of study, has always relied on poetry. And uh, when people ask to quote Brecht, what does one sing about in the dark times? We sing about the dark times. We, so to have people like Gorik to be able to continue to sing and to have in an audience other poets Shadala is here, Manira is here, translators, poets, is even more um, pleasurable. The task of the English department has primarily been to get together the materials, find jury members. Uh, not often an easy task if jury members disagree, as has happened in the past. Referring it all to a third, uh, we receive hundreds of entries every year mm -hmm. and uh, we have tried very hard to make sure each entry gets adequate attention. Um, there is of course good, bad, indifferent poetry, some which masquerades as poetry, um, but all of it gets equal amount of attention. Adjudicating between jury members is uh, it's a difficult task. That's something we have tried to do and uh, I must thank my colleagues last two years have done it. One of our jury members, Anna Korean, is here. Uh, the other was Dr. Girish Pawar, who um, isn't in the audience as of now. Uh, we usually have a policy of having the prize ceremony in the department or somewhere on the university campus. So we have had a little bit of uh, difference about, of opinion over this. So we have graciously granted it to the HLF this time. <laughs> Um, why in the campus? Because if it's a Department of English thing, uh, we would like our students to have the benefit of listening to the uh, prize winner um, and poets like Arunati who um, have come for this. So what we did was, since we weren't going to be ha having the ceremony on our campus, we had a little poetry session um, and a conversation with the poets on Friday. So Goedek who had come to the department uh, on Friday morning and Arundhati later in the afternoon, read poetry. So our students got a taste of what Goedek does. Um, there was a conversation between him and Arundhati on poetry and craft. Arundhati read some of hers. This is a far more formal setting, obviously. Uh, not something I am very comfortable with, as several of you in the audience will immediately recognize. Um, with that, my part of the Today's work is, is done. Thank you again for coming and thanks to the Rai Prahl Trust for allowing this to happen. But most of all, thanks to Goerich um, for giving us stuff to read Discover, for, and for our discovery that it's interesting stuff to read. To Arundhati for having come to the department, having been part of our program. Our friends from various departments, Professor Parola, Kanchan Malik, Anjali and others who are here. And to other members of the audience who have come in for the love of poetry. Thank you. Thank you for more. <coughs> Actually, yeah, this is an interesting time. This is the eighth prize, as my sister was saying a little while ago. And uh, I think there has been a very interesting way we did this this time. And um, it was Keki Darwala who 
was the jury on behalf of the trust, apart from the two members from the department, Anna Korean and Girish Pawar. Um, this time we followed a little different method. We had the jury members from the department shortlist the prizes to about 25 and uh, KKG had to read the last uh, 25. Um, so I think it was a very interesting kind of scenario where we had Gorik that came out of this but it was clearly something that Anna will talk much more about but uh, before I call Anna Kurian, I'd like to introduce this year's Srinivas Rai Road Poetry Prize winner, Gauri Kramachari. Gorik is his pen name, Devarshi Brahmachari, an economics research consultant based in New Delhi, is the winner of this year's Srinivas Rai Prol Poetry Prize. He was chosen from a field of about 160 contestants from across the country and by the jury consisting of the eminent poet Keki Daruwala and Anna and Girish from the Department of English. Originally from Silchar Assam, Gorik had his first collection of poems for the love of pork, recently published from lay edition Du Zeparo, Denmark. His chapbook of poems, Joining the Dots, is has come, not forthcoming as what I have here, but has come from Nivasani Publications, also in Hyderabad. He has been uh, represented in 40 Under 40, an anthology of post-globalization poetry, edited by Nabina Das and Samson Ali, where we've had other uh, poetry prize winners also. Um, he co-edits the Sunflower Collective's blog. His poems and articles have appeared in Northeast Review, Open Road Review, Nether, and Travel Poetics, among other things. I now call Anna Kurian to speak to us a little bit on behalf of the jury this year. No, everybody. Very formal proceedings. I don't really fit into this, but. Thank you for the, to the Right Paul Trust for organizing this. Like my head said, poetry is kind of dying out in literature departments. People don't want to read it, write it, teach it at all. So to have a poetry prize is something which we really value. And to be involved in its education was a rare pleasure. Now, this year especially, because we had the job of the department faculty had the job of narrowing down the 160 plus entries to a short list of about 25, which is what our brief was. We started out and the two of us do this independently and we were supposed to compile the short list. So what struck me when reading this year's poetry entries was that there was a usual, a lot of the usual extremely personal, extremely sentimental, emotional poetry, which was kind of passé. Then there were also the others who seemed to feel that in the situation in which the world is currently, where everybody is practicing exclusionary politics, where we are worried about things like intolerance, lots of the poets were writing about that, writing in passion poetry about how difficult it is to survive and what does it mean to write poetry in a situation like this. So we had an entry, somebody called Priyam Goswami, who was one of the significant entries picked out by KK Tarawala as well who wrote about the structures which make exclusion possible, whether it is in the family or whether it's in the larger sphere of the nation. And then there were others who wrote about what does home mean, which is nice because it was interesting to see that they did not think of home as just a place, but also maybe a language, always located in memory. And in that component, in that set of poets, we had somebody called Harnit Kaur, who wrote about how Home is always a language. It's not at all about being a place. So it was also about the place of memory and how we construct home via our memory. And we have the place of memory in our lives is also the theme, if you can call it that, of Gorik's prize-winning poem called Meet a Gage, which I think he'll be reading later on. Now, 
Then there was the one poem which had a chance of maybe beating Gaurik Brahmachari's entry of three poems and that was something called Entry 123 by Chandra Mohan. It was an interestingly titled poem itself because it said 13 ways of looking at a black burkini. But then as an entry, all three points considered together, it became rather weak. So then we couldn't really give the prize there. Now, Gaurav's poetry was consistently good. It engaged with all of these concerns, the everyday concerns, the personal, the sentimental, but also, of course, he talked about and he spoke about the quotidian and the everyday in language which made it viable to consider him the prize of the, the pick of the lot this time. So he had three poems, Residual, which was about a hospital waiting room, Meter Gage, and that is the poetry, uh, the poem which Keki Daruwala thought was the best, and he actually said about it, and I quote, this is a short stab of a poem. It has an allegorical touch about it, which is fascinating. Some splendid lines, like, how the elephants taught the night train its whistle, and how we burnt down memory. The poem is an allegory for the vanished past and the symbols like the meter gauge trains which have disappeared along with the wilds. So his poetry is something which makes us, helps us to believe that poetry, even in times like this or particularly in times like this, is viable, not just viable but essential because they, the poems, that, the, that these poets, poets such as Gorik and Arundhati write, help us to reconfigure, help us to illumine the times that we live in. Keki Daruwala's uh, comment about Meter Gage, I have all three read, and so now I will move on and the prize giving can take place. Thank you very much. Anna, um, before the actual presentation of the prize, I think there is always someone in the audience who wonders about the Srinivas Rai Pro Literary Trust. And this was started in the name of our father. Srinivas Rai Prol in the year 2000. And what about his poetry? Well, he published three collections and one of them was called Bones and Distances, which he wrote when he was in California, when he was studying for his Masters in Structural Engineering. The second one, Married Love and Other Poems, was written or rather published, all three were published by Writers Workshop and that was published in 1971 and that was again his middle age kind of poetry. The final collection, Selected Poems, was saying something about his entire life. And Srinivas Rai Prol, an engineer turned poet, was very much someone who was a private person. And we, in perpetuation of this, thought that we would have this prize for young poets, for poets between the ages of 20 and 40, for which we've been criticized a lot, saying why is there an age limit, but I say there's an emotional or a sentimental reason, that was when Rai Prol's best poetry came. Of course, he's the son of a very famous Telugu poet Rai Prol Subha Rao, and very often, I think, did something, uh, read a lot of Telugu but never wrote that uh, much himself and he, this year we brought out a book of translations from Telugu by Srinivas Rai Prol, Perspectives. For those of you who are interested, it's also available out there. We are also going to be giving it to our friends on the stage. So we are very, very grateful to Arundhati Subramanyam for agreeing to give away uh, the award this year and we will now move to the presentation of the award. The Srinivas Rai Pro Literary Trust in association with the Department of English, University of Hyderabad is pleased to present the 8th Srinivas Rai Pro Poetry Prize on January 29, 2017 to Gaurik Brahmacheri for poetry that has an allegorical touch about the vanished past and symbols which have disappeared along with the wilds. Gaurik Brahmacheri. This 
here as uh, the Srinivas Rai Pro Literary Trust is collaborating with the Hyderabad Literary Festival and we have the eminent um, Arundhati Subramanyam with us. Arundhati Gorik is not going to have only one but uh, one more award. Uh, one more award that you have to present to him. So I invite um, Mr. Surya Rao Garu uh, from Muse India onto the dais. For those of you who don't know me, I am G.S. Rao, one of the directors of this literary festival. I also happen to be the founding director of the Hyderabad Literary Festival. Hyderabad Literary Festival was started by Muse India, a literary web journal. I was the founding managing editor, I continue to be the managing editor of Muse India. Started in 2005 by a few of us writers here in Hyderabad. I am happy to share that today, 12 years later, Muse India has grown into a very well recognized literary web journal of the country which is read in several places across the world. We have more than 9,000 registered members from 50 countries and that has been possible because it's a web journal and it is not a, not a printed journal. I think the basic advantage of being on the net. First of all, I would like to thank Aparna Rayaprol for being so kind enough to allow us to squeeze into this Rayaprol prize uh, session because this is a little unscheduled component of the prize awards. We thought of it basically because Gwarik also happens to be the Muse India Young Writer Award for Poetry and he was here anyway. He was here anyway to receive the prize, so I need not say much. But this is the book that got the award for him, uh, for the love of folk. Yeah. <laughs> the actual book is what he had For the fiction category, uh, we have joint winners, as I mentioned, Radhika Mairata Grace gets the prize for the novel In the Light of Darkness. This is, this is her debut novel and when she is up here, I will just request her to say a few words about herself and the book, not taking too much time. The other, other joint winner of the fiction prize is Karan Mahajan. Karan Mahajan is US based and could not make it to Hyderabad. This is the book, this is the novel that gets him the award, The Association of Small Bombs, the novel. With those brief words, may I now request my good friend Arundhati, who has also kindly agreed to hand over the News India Young Writer Awards to kindly hand over. The award carries a certificate of recognition and a cash component of 10,000 rupees to each of the winners. Anyway, Goyit will be reading from his book. So I'm sure all of you are expecting to hear his book. May I now request Radhika to come over onto the stage. Two sentences about yourself. Thank you very much. Uh, I think for a debut writer and an unplanned writer at that, 
uh, nothing could be bigger and better to push me forever into this world of literature. I don't know if I'll go on to write more books, one book, 50 books, I don't know. But In the Light of Darkness will always be the most honest piece of my writing. So I hope you guys get to read it and you like it. Thank you very much News India. Thank you very much HLF. This has been incredible. Thank you. Thank you so much, all of you. Well, now it's the time that all of you have been waiting for. I'm going to request Gorik to read first and maybe the poems that won him the prize. Yeah. And after that, it will be Abhi. Thank you. I would like to thank uh, Professor Aparna Rapro, uh, Professor you know, Parvala, and everyone at Rapro Trust. Uh, Pramod Nair, sir, it has been wonderful to meet him and uh, uh, Professor Kurian at the department. We, uh, we had the interaction with uh, Port uh, Arunati Subramaniam. Uh, and thanks also to GPS Rao and the News India team. Uh, the judges and the juries. I would like to start with the poem that everyone seems to like now. Uh, it's called Meter Get. The narrow track that runs through the wild forests of Dimasaha disappears from my memory. Every day I forget a little. Many tunnels and bridges we had crossed once now reappear in a song. How the elephants taught the night to whistle, night train to whistle. How those birds fell, how they died and melted onto that river. How we took to hate and burned those bridges how we collected storms to forget a road that led to our homes how we burned down a memory the narrow track that runs through the wild forests slowly disappears from the map there are no bridges no trains run through them only the ghosts of these joint tracks that meander in cold shivers of the night winds. This is a personal poem, one of the three poems that I had sent for the Royal Prize, but this is a poem I did not read in the department, so I'll read it here. Uh, it is a personal poem and it is also a bit of, uh, I don't know, anyway, you'll figure it out. Summer Market Folk. Sitting here at market number four, near the tea stall smoking on a hot Monday morning, when everyone has left for office and the shopkeepers have fallen asleep. I remember how the vapor rose up from the boiling tea many years ago on a hot May afternoon, me sitting here just like this, jobless and terrible. The heat that stains the fish brings a foul odor from the Kalibari canteen. As I sweat and dry my lips in ash and tea and travel through a summer of irresponsibilities to forget the hallucination of a productive life I once tried to live. Neither the cycle nor the straight line, not even this brakes I hammer can comfort me now. This arid city can seem scarier when the sun is blazing and there is nowhere to go.
And then I'll read one uh, favorite poem of mine from my first book of poems for the love of work. Uh, it's called The Indian Coffee House. In the Indian coffee house, you can sit for hours without drinking coffee. You may read papers, write your journal, sit idle to watch people, stories, rain. No one bothers you in the Indian coffee house as you sit for hours without drinking coffee. Time is like soil in the Indian coffee house, aging yet constant. Sound of gray years play with memories of the 70s and ask pertinent questions about a country that we could have become and a country we could not be. In the Indian coffee house, they, story, uh, they store stories from emergency. The walls and the table smell of Dudarshan. The white clad waiters never get their orders right. For in the Indian coffee house, no one bothers. No one bothers if you sit for hours without drinking coffee. But the world outside lives in present. You can hear people bargain at Palika Bazaar or you could watch them run all over CP but in the Indian coffee house no one bothers when you sit for hours without drinking coffee Thank you. Thanks a lot and thanks also to HLF Thank you Rorik, I wish you a lot of many more poems and a lot of writing I would now like to present in front of you Arundhati Subramaniam, who is a poet and a prose writer, winner of the inaugural Kushwan Singh Memorial Prize for Poetry, the Raza Award for Poetry and the International Pio Vigorniani Prize in Italy. She is the author of 10 volumes of prose and poetry. Widely translated and anthologized, her recent book of poems, When God is a Traveller, we were privileged to get to hear a little bit the other day, was the season's choice of the Poetry Society, shortlisted for the T.S. Eliot Prize in the UK. Her prose works include the best-selling biography, Sadhguru, More Than a Life. As editor, her most recent work is the Penguin Anthology Award of Sacred Verse, Eating God, a book of Bhakti poetry. I'd like to present to you Arundhati uh, the translations that my father did from Telugu and also the collector's edition of now diminishing East West. I just want to say that I'm particularly glad to be here because I read Srinivas Raipal's poetry many years ago and I've been a long-standing admirer of his work. I was struck right away by his verse, which is laconic, unfussy, and yet extremely self-assured. And that voice has stayed with me, and I'm very glad to be here for an award in this country that's actually instituted in the memory of a poet, and a very significant Anglophone poet. So that's one reason why I'm here. The other is the fact that I actually believe that awards like these are a way of valuing legacy and a way of valuing the present. Far too often we freeze legacy into some kind of um, antique museum piece literature and we also freeze the present into some kind of a historical utterance and that might have to do with the fact that publishers and the mainstream media are often looking for an overnight sensation and we don't often talk about the whole web that exists a web of connections of conversations 
that you often never get a chance to eavesdrop on. And I think particularly for a poet, poets particularly are often encouraged to believe that they must operate in a state of splendid isolation. And an award like this is a reminder that that is not the case. That in fact, there are ecosystems. Ecosystems that nourish us, and ecosystems that we, in our own small way, hopefully, contribute to. So I think this award is, in fact, far more significant than um, we might believe. And also, to be here for the Muse India Awards is special, because the Muse India Journal is one that I've known for a long time. And it's journals like these that do their work in a quiet and intrepid way. And to think that News India has been around well before Facebook and well before the epidemic of literary festivals in this country is a happy thought. It's just good to know that there have been initiatives, quiet initiatives, that have honored poetry just by paying it the simple act of attention. I think that is hugely valuable. So while we applaud Gorik and Radhika, let's also have a round of applause for two very significant awards. You know, literary festivals, maybe this is a sentiment many of us share, I found increasingly, I find myself uncomfortable at literary festivals even while I attend them and I enjoy several sessions. And the reason I'm uncomfortable sometimes is the fact that literary festivals are meant to celebrate the word. But the problem is that the word is just too much with us. So periodically, in order to celebrate the word, one needs a palate cleanser in order to be able to go back and reclaim the word and feel grateful for it. And I think it's in that context that an award for poetry becomes so important because poetry is not a verbal art that is just about words. Poetry is the only verbal art that is also about pauses, that is also about consciously accommodating silences and I think if there's anything that's in desperate short supply in our world today whether it's in public life political cultural religious or even in our conversations with each other it's the pause so I will take a pause and I will share with you a poem that for me is from my it's from my most recent collection it is for me a poem in praise of the pause. It took me a very long time to understand that poetry is a dark art because it is in fact a perforated utterance. And that all those blank spaces on a page of poetry mean this is a poem called Poems Matter. It was snobbery, perhaps, or habit, to want perforation, to choose cotton, for instance, with its coarse asymmetries over polyester or unctuous rayon. But this, I suppose, is what we were looking for all along. This weave that dares to embrace air. This hush of linen. These frayed edges. These places where thought runs threadbare. Where colors bleed into something vastly blue. Like sky. These tatters at peace almost. With a great outrage of not being around. It's taken a long time to understand that poems matter because they have holes.
And I'd like to conclude with a short poem called Prayer, because it seems like the right way to conclude a session like this. It's a prayer from my very first book. It's a prayer for poetry. It's a prayer for pauses. It's a prayer for love. Prayer. May things stay the way they are in the simplest place you know. May the shuttered windows keep the air as cool as bottled jasmine. May you never forget to listen to the crumpled whisper of sheets that mold themselves to your sleeping form. May your pillows always be silvered with cat down and the muted percussion of a lover's breath. May the murmur of the wall clock continue to decree that your providence run ten minutes slow. May nothing be disturbed in the simplest place you know, for it is here in the fetal hush